Our guests are Matt Bevan, Brad Copas, and Shauna Sterling. Senator Mitch McConnell was invited but is not with us this evening. And the third part of that question is, uh, what's the difference between a Kentucky Republican and a Kentucky Tea Party Republican? I don't know that I would be qualified to give you the exact answer on the latter. I will tell you this, I'm a conservative Republican and I can speak to what that is. And as a conservative, I'm somebody who believes that the Constitution of the United States is the law of the land. And that the Constitution, above all, should be the guiding factor for what pieces of, in, of legislation are sponsored, co-sponsored, debated, or voted on. I started following politics and world events when I was seven, when uh, the Iranian hostage, the Iranian embassy, uh, the U.S. embassy was taken over in, in Tehran. And uh, I was fascinated by it. I was, I was so disappointed with President Carter at the time. And I was seven years old. I had no clue what was going on in the world at the time. But that one event solidified the rest of my life to, to follow world events and politics. And, and I was a large Reagan supporter solely because of that event. Uh, as a U.S. Senator. And we deserve no less, we the people of this country. With respect to how it differs here versus another state, truth be told, we're fairly conservative here in Kentucky. We are. Kentuckians, we're conservative folks, regardless of political party, frankly. A good, good two-thirds of us, regardless of party, are fairly socially conservative and fiscally conservative folk. As a young child, and I know everybody likes to talk about Reagan today. I think he was a good president. I'm not just here to say I like Ronald Reagan. So people think I like Ronald Reagan, but that one event for me as a young child, it showed me that he was willing to stand up for America. Now, more than that, as a, as a Kentucky Republican, I grew up in Monroe County, one of the staunchest Republican counties in Kentucky out of 120 counties. It's one of the four, uh, if I'm not mistaken, original and always Republican-serving counties. So I grew up my entire life living the, the Republican philosophy, listening to Republicans, uh, my, my grandfather used to go out and campaign, or electioneer as they called it, uh, for Republican candidates. And when I look at the Tea Party here in Kentucky today, what I see is the rift that has been created, not just in the Kentucky Republican Party, but also in the National Republican Party. And this is the reason why we're having the problems, and this is the reason why we can't win the races. And the main reason is Mitch McConnell's failure to lead. He's not a leader. And so it's wonderful to be a conservative Republican, but know that I'm also representing the ideology of many people outside of our party as well. Um, it was reported that uh, you told him at uh, MSNBC at one point during the campaign that you were not a Tea Party guy. Did you say that, first of all, and do you still feel that way? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I guess I would have to ask you to define what you mean by a Tea Party guy. There is no action. When people go in the voting booth, for, for all three of us, we will be running as Republicans. Uh, and, and that's what I've always been registered as, 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 as a Republican. It's the only party I've ever been associated with. That said, I have the support of the Louisville Tea Party, the, the Lexington Tea Party, the United Kentucky Tea Party, Take Back Kentucky, Tea Party Patriots, etc. So an inordinate number of both local and national level Tea Party groups, and I'm grateful. And I think the reason that I have their support, Bill, is the fact that I am a very fiscally conservative person. I'm he doesn't deserve to be uh, returned back to a sixth term to represent Kentucky, and he does, does not deserve to go on to serve in a Senate majority uh, role if the Republicans are able to retake the Senate. Ms. Sterling, you haven't always been a Republican, is that correct? Oh, no. I'm, you probably can't see this, but this is me and my daughter campaigning for President Obama. We helped him get in. I was a lifetime Republican until... Lifetime Democrat? Lifetime Republican. Lifetime Republican. Until... Was you campaigned for President Obama? Yeah, but that's because I got upset the Republicans for saying something that Matt Bevin said to me the other day, how you can promise what equal opportunity but not equal outcome. And I didn't like that because I feel that... Yeah, some children have better schools, or some families have better um, opportunities to education, and that's not fair. So my my concern and why I ended up helping Obama is because of the health care. I'm not sure what you what you agree with health care. I'm sure we'll find out tonight. But um, I feel that our families need health care, and that's why I fought for it. Um, Problem I had with Mr. Obama was that he went after our guns, and he said he wouldn't do it. And they gave us paperwork, told us they wouldn't do it. So I'm very concerned about that. It puts our families at great risk all across our country. That's one of our, I'm a constitutionalist, that's what I believe. As far as the Tea Party, Brad is right on. Our Republican Party, it, it really is a strong party. Matt 
they want to make a new party. I think even Mitch want to make a new party. That's not the problem with the Republican Party. The problem is that we have leaders who have compromised our standards and people are insecure. Back to the question that we had earlier about the leadership, and, and it's actually a lack of leadership on Mitch McConnell's part for 29 years. Kentucky is ranked the second saddest state in the nation, and how can that be? If you're such a great senator and you're so powerful and you care about Kentucky, look at Monroe County. Monroe County that I grew up in is one of the uh, 100 poorest counties in the country, and it's a staunch Republican county. It's one of the highest voting per capita counties Republican uh, historically across the, the state. The, look at Monroe County. Monroe County that I grew up in is one of the uh, 100 poorest counties in the country. And it's a staunch Republican county. It's one of the highest voting per capita counties Republican uh, historically across the, the state. The, look at Monroe County. Monroe County that I grew up in is one of the uh, 100 poorest counties in the country. And it's a staunch Republican county. It's one of the highest voting per capita counties Republican uh, historically across the, the state. Uh, one of the things that I would have liked to have seen is for us to continue our rural agricultural programs. I just spent two and a half years in Italy, and I love to see that the Italians, they still have uh, families that made cheese. For um, I go to different events and they say, I'm a lifetime Democrat. Then others, I'm a lifetime Republican. And I think this was a generation before mine because, you know, I'm a lifetime American. All right, let's and take our first like phone call of the night. Uh, Mr. Dan Rose is on the phone from Lexington. Mr. Rose, a question for our candidates, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I'd like to know where each of these candidates believe that they owe a higher duty to the citizens of the United States than they do to foreigners. Uh, that uh, Kentucky lives with today. How going? Do I sugarcoat or do I go into? <laughs> no, I, I have concerns that are real concerns to me because I'm a Kentucky proud member and I agriculture. That's let's get our families out of poverty, try and help grow some of their own food. I'm just gonna say it. I don't like chemicals being sprayed over my farm. I'm trying to get organic. I don't like that. I've taken several classes at the University of Kentucky. I'm in a doctoral student right now on obesity, even working my on my own. And there, my body is has issues with the genetically modified foods. I ate organics, USDA certified organics for a year, and did better. But I think that we need to know what's in our food. I think that somebody, you know, needs to let families take them right to the maps on the CD, uh, the the CDC, and see that for the last 25 years, not just Kentucky, but Americans have been having more and more problems with obesity now. at school choice, then the children of Kentucky would not be forced to have Common Core jammed down their throat. Another issue I have with Common Core, because right now it's a monopoly. They have no alternative. If you had school choice, you would have an alternative with charter schools, etc. But one of the big issues I have with Common Core, it's an extraordinary invasion of the Fourth Amendment privacy rights of individuals, not only of the child, but of that child's family. In essence, turning the children into little spies on their parents. I think this is something that people should be le very leery of, but they should start by looking at just how flawed the actual educational quality of this curriculum is. All right, let's go to the phones. Jeffrey Jenkins from Lincoln County has a question. An A from the NRA, but they didn't put us on there. They put all the other House, other representatives, and of course, Mitch McConnell. But the only reason you know, he can get higher scores because he's been there so long. So, you know, yeah, I'd fight for him. Um, this is something I'm watching, the story of Clyde and Bundy. And American citizens out there having their cows killed. And, you know, it's horrible. But this family used to probably watch it. I won't say too much. But they, gun legislation. Well, they said that? that the people that were threatening to shoot them had AR-15s, and they're trying to take away the AR-15s so that the people can't have them. So do you think Congress should pass any sort of gun legislation at all? I think that Congress needs to follow the Constitution because the, they're do, violating our rights. Do you believe that uh, school teachers should be armed? I I think that if President Obama's children are protected and there's guns behind it, then our children need to be protected. They're just as important. Our families need to be pr protected. If somebody's going in to the schools, like in Sandy Hook, and that's where you know people have a problem with me because I I see see I saw actually Sandy Hook. To lobby Congress, and you can give me a problem on this, but I saw it in the Dark Knight Rises, 004818. I saw it, 
And I, I there's more code that I'm seeing. And that happened before the kids got killed yeah. at Sandy Hook. Well, let me move to uh, Mr. Bevin on the Second Amendment. Yeah, I'm a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights, unequivocally a strong supporter. I do own a number of weapons. I'm a former military uh, officer, and I am a concealed carry gun owner. Uh, I recently actually gave my wife an AR-15 for her birthday, which was, was one of the most delightful presents I've ever been. I, I, if I had known how much she would have enjoyed it, I probably would have given it to her years earlier. I, I think, that, you know, I, look at, I look at the Second Amendment. People talk about it almost like it's a book unto itself. 27 words, Bill. 27 words in the entire amendment. The last four of which are, shall not be infringed. Do you want to uh, answer that very quickly? Just very quickly. If you a wall. A hey, wall in the chicken coop, Mr. Bennett. Yeah, he's missing an action. I mean, here's the here's the sad reality. He is a man who is unwilling to defend his record. He literally, he's unwilling to because he's unable to. It is a 30-year track record that he is not proud enough of to be able to defend. And he has no vision for the future. He has spent $12.5 million so far in this primary, and there is not one semblance a vision that has been offered to us here in Kentucky as to what he proposes for us into the future. You've uh, quoted or you... Um, Senator McConnell uh, did not. I'm not sure about it's an incomplete sentence here. So, first of all, your thoughts on the Federal Reserve and uh, do you stand with Cruz, Mike Lee to defund Obamacare? The answer is I would. we should audit the Federal Reserve at a bare minimum, because we, the people whose money is being uh, controlled by decisions made at the Fed, should have an understanding of what's going on. It's the very least we should do. We would do the same to any private company that we had question of, and if we were shareholders. So I think we, the shareholders of the United States, as taxpaying citizens, and as those who have defended this nation in uniform, I think we are owed an audit of the Fed to look under the hood. That's for starters. Number two, I would absolutely fight for the entire full repeal of Obamacare. Mitch McC Clarification needed on your uh, point, uh, on your side, to clarify what you did and, and, and what you signed? Sure. I mean, it, it, for starters, I'm not accusing him of supporting it. I'm stating the actual fact that he was the staunchest supporter of whipping Republican votes for the bailout of Wall Street banks in a Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and then stood there between Chris Dodd and Harry Reid and crowed to the cameras that this was the finest hour in Senate history. I have never, ever been in support of using taxpayer money for the bailout of irresponsible companies. Never, never have. Then why did you sign your name on the paperwork? Because there, you have your name on here. As the CEO, and if you didn't agree with them, why didn't you warn them? I would have warned my family. Don't do well, don't let me, let me them. Answer the I'm question, sorry. In fairness, the, I mean, the reality is the CEO, Sarbanes-Oxley governs what needs to be signed by CEOs of various corporations. I was the president and CEO of a mutual fund company. Uh, and I was the chairman of the board. I was required by law to sign any number of documents that were released. I ne the commentary that is alluded to by McConnell was written by somebody else, which Mitch McConnell knows was written by somebody else. But he's sending out material to people saying that I wrote it. Again, it's another lie. Mitch McConnell cannot stand on his own record, so he distorts the record of those of us that are running against him. Mr. Mr. Copas, uh, yeah. yes, can please I go ahead. That? Let's go back to uh, the question that you asked Matt about MIT. And what I would like to say is that uh, I, I have to disagree some with Matt, because Matt and I both went to MIT, and that is military in transition, and we both understand what it is to be veterans. We've gotten out of the military, and we know it's tough, especially here in the state, when you, when you are military in transition, and you try to go and you try to find a job. When I came back, it took me six months to find a job, and that's with a pretty good resume. You know, so... Uh, to ensure that the voters of Kentucky are not saddled with either. I will tell you one thing. Brad has alluded a couple of times uh, to the fact that we have, in this most recent survey, the second saddest state in, uh, in America. I can assure you one thing we could do to put a smile on the face of the vast majority of Kentuckians is to vote Mitch McConnell out of office on May 20th. All right, Mr. Copas, let me ask you, Ms. Sterling, uh, finally, uh, excluding the two sen U.S. senators from, uh, from Kentucky, uh, what other United States Senator would you think you would be most like in the United States Senate? I would have to say Henry Clay. <laughs> but who is past and present. That's that's fair enough. Ms. Sterling? Ted Cruz. You, why? He's fiery. I like him. 
All right. He's up on his feet a long time. He's fighting for our country, and he's not backing down. He's not afraid of Mitch. Mr. Bevan, if you were in charge of naming the Republican president and vice presidential candidate in 2016, somebody anointed you with that, who would be on your ticket? It's going to be. I, I'm not even going to go there. Come on, Bill. That's crazy. It's, I, it's a function. It is hypothetical. It's a final question. But it's a function of who puts themselves forward. What we need, I would not put anyone on that ticket who was not willing to uphold and defend.